So, quarantine has finally ended. Yesterday, I had my first day of school, and I think it was pretty cool. 7 out of 10 experience would possibly do it again. But, here's the interesting part, is that with this long quarantine, unless you're Americans, where you're going to have a longer quarantine, we have, um, we have lots of time to watch movies, basically. And well, what did I do? I just uh, I went back and watched. I watched a whole bunch of franchises. Got a whole bunch of movies right here. We're gonna kind of go through. Well, actually, only have one from every, one movie from every franchise, which we have nine of. Anyways, let's get into it. Okay, in the ninth position, we have the. I'm only counting the first two Bill and Ted movies. Face the Music, I'm hopefully going to see this weekend. I haven't seen it yet. I really wanted to put this one up higher just because, actually, I'm wearing a Bill and Ted shirt and I actually don't have a physical form of Bill and Ted. But, well, we can say this t shirt. Um, <laughs> so, basically, the first Bill and Ted is a classic comedy. It is hilarious, it has a wacky premise. But then, Bogus Journey, I really didn't like. Honestly, the only good thing about it that came out of it, I think, was death. Trust me, that actually makes sense if you've seen the movie. It's not like a, this movie might make me want to die thing, but you, if you've seen Bogus Journey, you know what I'm talking about, which I feel like just brings the franchise really down low. Okay, the next spot, we have the Fast and Furious movies. And you know what? I really want to put because obviously the fact that I sat through all of the um, all of the movies doesn't mean that it's a bad franchise, right? If it was a super bad franchise, I would have given up. Maybe there might have been one or two week installments, but this does have <clears throat> Too Fast, Too Furious, <clears throat> sorry, and <clears throat> Hobbs and Shaw. But I still most of these movies I enjoy. They're fun. They're stupid, and you know what? It's like. It's a it's just really fun no matter what because the like you have like the first one which is an absolute you know amazing ride pun intended and this and so, some other ones you know each an element but you know some are pretty fine some are a bit weaker <clears throat> too fast and furious <clears throat> Hobbs and Shaw but yeah that's all I really gotta say about the fast and furious Next up, we have Superman, the uh, classics. You see, the problem is here, the Fast and Furious movies, the first one, you know, it can't, it, 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 it did anything and then nothing else really got that close to obtaining its level. With here, you own the first one, same with, honestly, actually, the next, all these couple ones, is they have great first installments, various levels of other ones. Um, Superman is just, the first movie is really good, the other ones, well, uh, Superman 2 is pretty good, and honestly, Superman Returns is watchable, but, uh, yeah, Superman movies, I really liked the first one, actually, I really liked it, but the other one, uh, yeah, yet again, the other ones didn't ever really reach that level. Next up, we have the Frozen movies. When I heard that Frozen 2 was being put on Disney Plus over quarantine, I rewatched this one one day, and the next day, saw Frozen 2. Um, yeah, honestly, Frozen I really like, okay? It's not to exactly say it's a guilty pleasure, but I really like this one, but it's another case of the first one being good. The sequel's not really living up to the hype. I really love this one. There's elements of Frozen 2 I like, but the biggest letdown is this one has amazing music, right? It's a musical. It's got to have good music. If your musical is bad music, it's not that enjoyable. And with Frozen 2, it was I was having an absolute ball with it, but then all of the music was literally kind of felt like they're trying to be let it go, which, unpopular opinion, I think is the worst one of the original. Next up, we got the Wreck-It Ralph movies. You see, 
this one and Frozen were very honest. They're like practically the same, except the fact that this one's not a musical, so it doesn't need to have good music, kind of. I also absolutely love Wreck-It Ralph, but then Ralph breaks the internet. I find a very forgettable second installment. If they end up making a third one, I don't fully actually have no clue what the probability of it. I thought there was no chance of them making a second Wreck-It Ralph film. I'll probably still go watch it, but not exactly something I'm super excited for. Okay, I know there might be people be like, Will, you've been talking very pretty negatively about the last couple franchises, and now you're going to see one that, because, well, spoiler alert, you know, they're going to be like, I'm a Potterhead. You should not put the Harry Potter movies this low, but trust me, this is a huge jump. With the exception of probably the fourth and sixth film, this, is, that, this franchise was a blast. Uh... I was actually watching it during uh, one that was higher up and it even got me distracted and I took a massive break from it. Um, watched these ones and I was like, I gotta get back to this. Watched the rest of that franchise and went back to this franchise. This is kind of a part of the, this, well not exactly the movies, but the books were kind of the base of what made me love storytelling. It just, you, uh, you know, it's very compelling characters and well, it may seem a little cliched, you gotta remember. It, this is the movie that made people basically all those cliches were copying the Harry Potter franchise. Harry Potter, everyone gotta love it. It's it's Harry Potter. That's the best you gotta say about it. Up next, The Lord of the Rings. Now these are absolutely beautiful. Biggest problem is the fact that they're long, but that's also the best part of them, right? You get so much deep, awesome of this, the, the uh, of this huge, large-scale uh, traditional fantasy, and you gotta love Lord of the Rings, right? Huge, it's awesome, absolutely amazing. I still haven't read the books yet, but I'm hoping on to soon. But you know, actually, we have like the two fantasy um, franchises right beside each other, which is kind of funny. But anyways, um, this is so huge, and it just this ridiculous scale. I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. I love these Hobbit movies that I also watched. Nah, not so good. But this original trilogy is ridiculously good and amazing. But there's still two even better than Lord of the Rings. Okay, I said Harry Potter kind of started my nerdism. But Back to the Future infirmed it. I, um, actually, very funny story. Theaters opened up here in Alberta, like, a couple months ago. Uh, about, well, not a couple months ago, but a couple weeks ago. And, well, because Tenet and Bill and Ted Face the Music were, like, the first big, you know, we gotta rush to see these movies, and all everything else was, was quite smaller. They are like, you know what? Let's put a couple other things in there. And I was like, I want to go to the theater. Which one should I see? They had things like the Spider-Man Homecoming. Actually, in Far From Home as well. They had, uh, like, a, I'm having a brain fart now. Those are two I can think of. And also, the first Back to the Future. The next day, I watched the second one because I felt like it. And the day after, I watched the third one. I was like, I just unintentionally watched the Back to the Future trilogy. Um... <laughs> So yeah, it's great actually seeing my favorite movie, which is the first one, on the big screen. It blew my mind away, and I really loved it. This is a hilarious, it's hilarious, it's intriguing, it's very intense and keeps you on the edge of your seat, has beautiful and intense and compelling romance be between two people that have like nothing in common being George and Lorraine, but then by the end of the movie, they're like the perfect couple. But what is the number one franchise that I watched, and probably one of the number one franchise of all time? And in the number one spot, we have the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was the franchise I was watching when I took a break to watch the uh, Harry Potters, and when I came back to this one, it was right for Civil War, and that's where things, you know, get cranked up. This is probably the franchise with the worst, most not awesome movies. Uh, never mind. This is the first good fran uh, franchise I'd classify as good 
with the most not awesome movies. You know why? Because there's 23 of these. I'm pretty sure it's 23. But 23 movies I watched, all of them over the summer. I had an absolute blast with them. Super compelling. And honestly, you can kind of just see how things evolve and like, even sure, people like Hulk and the I and War Machine do got recast, but there are still very, every single character, even though they're hopping between millions of directors, they feel like the same character while also evolving. And this franchise, it's, the, our, our, our world is getting nerdier and nerdier by the day. The fact that everyone was flocking to see Avengers Endgame in theaters like a year ago, which is kind of weird that seems that long, a movie that you need to kind of see 23 prior movies to fully understand and get all the references and know what's going down. That's an achievement, okay? It's undeniable that that is a huge achievement and this movie pulled it off. And yeah, honestly, not all the characters are great. Like, looking, right, you know. Sadly, we also know the legendary Black Panther has recently died, which is quite a bummer and I don't want to end this this video on a bummer note so I'm going to try to make the intro very cheery and happy. I just realized I said intro instead of outro cuz I have no clue what I'm doing but anyways those were it honestly I kind of enjoyed most of these even though yes Superman may not be the cream you know Superman 4 might not be the cream of the crop but you know it just I'm looking back and I was like, wow, all of these have something special that nothing else has. And it made this vi list very hard to make. Because, like, besides the fact that you guys, that they're very recognizable names, that's like all of these things have in common. Obviously, we have a whole bunch of science fiction and fantasy, and that's about it, actually. But nothing really in common. And it just so, is such, a yes, having to stay home for six months sucked. But movies made it so much more better to go through the absolute grind that was the end of the world. So, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And I recommend if you ever use the internet, which I feel like a lot more of you guys do now that the world is on fire, why not use the internet so you can communicate with people without spreading the fire? Um, I hope you enjoyed and... Yeah, leave a like if you use the internet. Just a recommendation. I think it'll help you out a lot. That's Caden out.